when I'm talking about girls, I, I, I'm having like the thought of like the fresh and fit girls. So that's why I'm talking to them like that. But even like the girls that I know though, like they're just like, oh yeah, I, I don't need to go to college. Like I can always be a stripper. And they genuinely mean it. Like they wow. genuinely, I promise you, they genuinely mean it. Like, and, and one of my friends, like she really wants to be a stripper. Like it's not even like, sometimes they're just like, it's my only option, they want to. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. Black so what, what are some things you've noticed about girls that you're confused about, that you feel like you understand or that you're curious about? Personally, I think that I think that white girls are easier. Honestly, I think that white girls are easier. Um, and that's why I think that like um you and like our siblings think that like oh i don't like black girls and all that but like they're just easier to be honest um i definitely don't ever think i could see myself marrying a white girl personally because they don't know like they don't know about our culture and I want my kids to know about our culture. But earlier you said you didn't know about it either. Yeah, but if I know, if I have a person that is my culture as well, then they could. You know. No, but what, why, why I say that is if you don't know. And you oh, well, I definitely, I definitely like plan on learning more about it. Like before I was not, like, I was naive. I didn't really care much about stuff. But like I recently I've been trying to learn more about the world, uh, people, just enhance my knowledge of Let, let's talk. Let's, let's talk about, you said white girls are easier. Explain that. Easier as in they, I feel like they always are, they, they kind of want to check off like the black guy on their list. So like they're already wanting a black guy. So uh, you don't really have to do much. With a black girl though, they, I don't know. It's like, they don't really care to talk to you. It's not like they, no, they're, oh, they're very picky. They're very picky with who they talk with. They don't usually like white guys, I'm not gonna lie, but um, with the guys they talk to, it's like they have to be like top tier. They have to be like very top tier. And I've with a few black girls, cause you know, top tier too, but. <laughs> Um, usually it's, it is harder than it is with white well, girls. Explain, explain that. So that you made good points about white girls being easier. Explain why black girls are so picky, as you put it. Why they are? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'm trying to That's think through I'm, it. Think through it? Okay. Um... It's a safe place. Y'all like safe space. <laughs> safe place spaces. <laughs> no, I really, I don't, have, I don't, I don't know why. It's harder. I'm. That's why I'm trying to learn. So I'm talking to more people, and all that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. What um. What are your questions about it? Like if 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 you could talk to an older black dude who might understand black girls better or an older black girl who might understand black girls better, what would be your questions? Um, kind of like, do you, kind of already have this thought in my head because of like the question, I mean, y'all were talking with your friend uh, earlier, but like, do they kind of like resent us in a way not like as in they hate us but like there's a part of them that like doesn't fully feel comfortable with a black guy you know what i'm saying so that's why they only go after the top tier dudes because like they also think that like a lot of black guys will end up in the hood and all that and like the, uh, the girls that are like, they're okay with that, of course, they go with any black guy, it doesn't really matter. But the ones that like, I'm usually interested in, they're like, 
they have to get the top tier black guys. Because they're the pretty girl, and then they know they want a future, blah, blah, blah. So they got to get the top tier. That will be a football player or a basketball player. Um, that seems like they'll have a future. So, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you my theory. I think, you know, so that what I was talking about earlier, um, it's in the book, Black Man's Guide of Understanding the Black Woman by Shahrazad Ali. And if you can ever um, read that book, you should. Because it'll give you, it'll make you understand certain things. And what she talks about was, uh, she says, maybe there is some subconscious resentment that the black woman has for the black man for not being able to protect her during slavery. And also not being able to defend her during Jim Crow and the things that happened afterwards. And I think that that resentment on some level is passed down generation to generation to generation. And I also think it's amplified when a black man is not in the home. Because it's like the resentment was already passed down, but now I have nobody around. I don't have a dad to change my mind. I don't have a dad to show me different. I don't have, I don't have uncles, dads, brothers to show me that niggas ain't shit or that niggas are shit, right? Um, so, you put that also in a world that tells black girls and tells black women that they're magic and that they're flawless and that they can do no wrong. They look at us in a certain way as Birkin bags. And that's why you got to be top tier. You got to be because you got to be on the complete other side of the spectrum of what my expectation is. Like you, you have to like make it worth my while yeah. type thing. And I think that's what happens. And I think that's why, unfortunately, a lot of uh, black boys in your generation, especially the ones who don't fit the future or the rapper or trap star archetype, go to white girls. Because on top of that, they're also easier. <laughs> so like what needs to happen? Probably like not come in with a bias of your past experiences because of your dad left and you think that maybe he'll leave or something like that. <sighs> what needs to happen? I don't know. I guess any, anything just coming in with a clouded like judgment is just wrong. Just going with a blank slate, I guess. But that could also be kind of stupid in a way, because then that's kind of when you get hurt. It's naive, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, my advice is that um, black girls and black women deserve a certain level of grace. And that grace, you can only properly give them that grace when you have an understanding. And part of that understanding is doing the work and doing the due diligence to understand the, the history, right? So understanding that her dad has been in jail since she was five. So that's why she thinks about men a certain way. And on top of that, she might have been molested when she was 10. That's why she thinks about it. So it's, it's easy to say you should leave that at the door when you come into a new relationship. But people aren't like that. Human beings don't function like that. Everybody you meet is going to come with baggage. You have to decide if you are willing to commit yourself essentially to their baggage and help them work through it as they help you work through yours. So for me, the reason why I'm so committed to black girls and white girls aren't even an option is because I understand that ultimately the person you decide to have a child with, get married to, build with, be in partnership with is a political decision. It's not about convenience. Marriage has never been about convenience. We've twisted it now, and that's why so many of them are failing, but it's a, it's a political decision. It's a power move, right? And ultimately, if I'm going to say black is beautiful, black is powerful, I have to choose black. Black is not easy to choose. I say it all the time. You have to love black people to love black people. Like You have to first commit yourself to black people are the only option, because if you don't make that commitment, then the white girls are easier. <laughs> And you're going to go the easy route, right? And, and then nothing changes. You're just going to give birth to another generation 
that's more naive and more naive and more naive and more naive because the what's up my guy, he learned that somewhere. He's watched his dad or his uncles or his, his brother's understanding of or listened to his understanding of black people. And it's, it's been reinforced by TV and media. And now he's like, yeah, I get black people. I understand them. They're all thugs and hoodlums. And that can quickly turn into they're all thugs and hoodlums. And, and they should all be exterminated. So history teaches us how to see trends. So like when you study stocks and things like that, you can see, OK, if the news starts talking about these things and the company starts selling off these things and they start firing these people, the stock is about to go down. You can still you can now forecast. And as part of manhood, being able to forecast. But if you're naively just, man, I buy when I feel like it, I'll sell when I feel like it, you're going to lose a lot of money. Same thing in life. You have to be able to forecast and understand that things that might seem small are not that small. Things that might seem not that deep are that deep, are very deep. And particularly, you know, my work is, is trying to mend black men and black women. Part of the reason is a lot of us lack understanding. And because we lack understanding, we can't offer grace. How can you be graceful to something you don't understand? I'm graceful that she's, you know, anxious all the time and she's uptight. Yeah. But now I understand that it's because she was raped at 10 years old. That's different. That's a different grace. That's understanding. That's comprehension. That's I get it. And you still won't fully get it. But if you just think she's just uptight and that's a simplistic dismissal, it's easy to say. Ah. But if you understand, yo, this girl was traumatized. And you could even make the argument that, you know, black people, especially black Americans, have been traumatized since birth. Like the trauma was ingrained in their DNA from slavery. And there's evidence for that. It's called epigenetics. So um, as far as um, black girls, I know we had a conversation about um, the black girl, white girl thing. And my question to you is like, what, what do you like and dislike about black girls? And you could start from your sisters to, you know, black girls you've met, talked to, been friends with? Resilient. Uh, I don't really like, it's not like race. Like, it's, it's not like I have a problem with white or black it's girls. It's just girls. They just don't seem to like care. They just, I, I feel like, I, I know, okay. I personally think that girls have it easier. Um, and like, they like they go through life knowing that they have an escape kind of because they know that if they can't make it as what they actually want to be then they can just show off their butt or their tits be a stripper do that and then they can make money um so that's like the one thing uh with girls um And they also just don't seem to be like, well, I mean, I'm 17. So like the girls I talk to, they don't seem to be serious, but like no one is, we're 17. So, uh. so what, what uh, do you think it creates like a generation of girls who feel like entitled because like you said, they can all show off their ass or whatever yeah. and they get all the yeah. attention they want. Yeah. So what's the problem with that? What's the problem with that? Is, is it a problem? It's a problem. Like the problem is, there's no like danger for them. Like they can go through life kind of doing whatever they want, and there could be consequences depending on like what it is that they're they're doing. But like most of the time, they can just go through life, going through life. You're young, so I'll take it easy on you. Um, they, hmm. 
life for a woman, particularly a black woman, is not easier. I'm not necessarily saying it's harder than it is for a black man, but it's different, right? There are certain challenges that women have that you'll never have. And there are certain challenges you have that they'll never have, right? And with life, I think we look at life too simply. Life is about trade-offs, right? So you might trade something for something that seems good, but there's a bad that comes with it too. So the only fan girls like you're talking about, the IG models, that you're talking about or the influencers that you're talking about, um, it might seem like their life is easy. But when you find out that that trip that she took to Dubai, she had to fuck a camel. Well, she had to fuck a camel. When you find out that that trip she took to Dubai, she had to let four grown men defecate on her. When you find out that that trip she took to Dubai in order to get the money, the $90,000 they promised her, she had to fuck a dog. Or when you find out that that um, that BBL that she got, she almost died on that table. BBLs are one of the most dangerous surgeries a person can take or can have. Literally, it's, it's, the, the, the mortality rate is high. Right. So. Um, and it's all in the attempt to either look a certain way or live a certain lifestyle. But again, life isn't simple. It's about trade-offs. So when you talk about, you know, periods, think about if you woke up once a month and there was blood coming out of you. I don't know. By any means, I definitely don't exactly. want to be a girl. Exactly. That makes life hard. Girl, for sure. Imagine if all you're judged by is how you look. Not what you know, not how you think. That is hard. It's frustrating. Imagine, particularly as a black girl, everything around you tells you that you're not beautiful. That's a tough experience. That's a very tough experience, particularly in a society that tells you that the most valuable thing about you is your beauty. Mm. So the easy that you're talking about, I think when you said it, you were thinking about white TikTokers. <laughs> but go ahead, I'm sorry. No. No, but um, generally, girls don't have it easier. They have certain advantages, sure. It's like we have certain advantages, but when you're walking home at night or walking on the street at night at nine o'clock, you don't have to worry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to try you? Yeah. If you were a girl. You would have to worry about something. All right. But I feel like what I was saying, like, easier, I feel like they can go through life more, like, delusional or kind of, like, just... Say more about that. Explain. Like, and when I, I feel like when I'm talking about girls, I, I, I'm having, like, the thought of, like, the fresh and fit girls. So that's why I'm talking them like that. But even, like, the girls that I know, though, like, they're just, like... Oh yeah, I don't need to go to college. Like I can always be a stripper, and they genuinely mean it. Like they wow. genuinely, I promise you, they genuinely mean it. Like and, and one of my friends, like she really wants to be a stripper. Like it's not even like sometimes they're just like it's my only option. They want to, so it's just like. What is, what's the race of these girls? Huh? What's the race? Oh, uh, the one that wants to is Latina, mm -hmm. um, and then some of the ones that are like. Uh, if I don't uh, make it and I can be a stripper, like they're black, white, and it's just a mix. But um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So what's, um, okay, let, let's play that out. Why is that bad? Is that bad? And then why is that bad? It's bad and it's like, <laughs> bad, okay, maybe not, but sad. It's just sad, like, that's, that you don't want to work harder to make sure you don't have to. Like, maybe you are working harder, but, like, that shouldn't even be an option type, like, but I don't know. Uh, it's just sad to me, personally, because no guy is, and if a guy does say that, it's just, wow, that's sad. That's so sad. But no guy, at least I know, is going to be like, if I can't make it to college, I'm going to go be a stripper, or I'm going to go post my... Uh, dingling on OnlyFans, like. 
So I think you're getting to a very deep point. The reason why it's sad ultimately is because it's unsustainable. Um, there's a there's a documentary on Netflix. It's called um, Hot Girls Wanted, I think. Yeah, Hot Girls Wanted, I think. And it documents like the the, the process of girls becoming porn stars, right? And like how they go from social media to, to porn or whatever. And one of the things they said is that the average life cycle of one of these girls, as far as in their career, right, is a year. And most of them, like 80, 90% of them do porn for a year. It fails. And they go back to their hometown and work at Hooters. Mm. And the reason that is, is because Number one, beauty is a depreciating asset. As you get older, you lose it. So you have a very small window. It's like being an athlete. You have a very small window where you can like go hard, and then after that, you're done. But the other thing, too, is men get bored quickly physically. So when the dude has watched her videos about two, three times, he's looking for the next girl. So eventually, nobody wants her videos anymore. Yeah. So she's out of business. Same thing with strippers. Same thing with OnlyFans girls. It is unsustainable. So now that you're 30 years old and don't nobody want to subscribe to your OnlyFans, you've grown cellulite, you've had a couple of kids, you've been traumatized by the different experiences of, you know, your clients and things like that. How are you going to feed yourself? It's the same reason athletes tend to go broke. Because in that time when he was a running back and one of the best running backs in the league and he was making all this money, he didn't learn anything about financial, um, yeah. financial intelligence or financial planning. And he thought his agent was going to help him. No, his agent is just trying to get his check. He thought his friends were going to help him. No, your friends are just trying to floss with you in the club. He thought the women are going to help him. No, they're just trying to get their check. He thought their parents were going to help him. My parents are uneducated. They don't know any better. How can they help me? So eventually, fast forward 10 years, he's broke. Somebody who's a millionaire is broke. Same thing happens to these girls. And that's what's sad because they're not thinking long term. And I think similarly, not just with Gen Z girls, I think Gen Z boys are also not thinking long term. And all this YouTube and I'm going to do prank videos and reactions and I'm going to wake up and record music with my friends. It's unsustainable. But I think what we did, my generation, the generation before me, is we sold your generation a fantasy. And I think we're actually doubling down on that fantasy with like the metaverse and all that good stuff. And it's this idea that you can be anybody, regardless of who you actually are. It's delusional and it doesn't work. And that's what I'm afraid for for your generation. We haven't given you all the skills to actually survive out here in the, in the, in the world. If all the technology shuts down and y'all have to literally go back into the y'all, y'all, y'all don't have the, the social skills, y'all don't have the environmental skills. Some people are still cultivating their kids with that stuff. Most of y'all don't. Most of y'all just know this. Most of y'all just know how to flex and look cool. And there's some people, if their Instagram shut down, they'd probably kill themselves. They have nothing. No life, no self-worth, no nothing. And that's why I'm afraid. And I think that's why a lot of people are afraid for your generation. And I think that's why these conversations are, are so important. So I hope that after this conversation, that insight that you said you're lacking, you go and get it so you can have the understanding instead of just saying you do because you don't. And a lot of your friends don't. And a lot of the people around you, do, white and black, don't have any understanding. And eventually, life in the world is going to punch you in the mouth. And if you don't know what that punch feels like, or even what a punch is, but you understand you're going to get punched, it doesn't make sense. So um, especially as a black boy, it's really important.